What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Brave and Faithful Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Raiden Dionisio. And today I have a Navy veteran. He is also the president of Schultz Wealth and Fiduciary Financial Planning and Wealth Management Advisor. He's also got a book out. He's the author of Thoughts on Things Financial, Your Guide to a Chaotic Money World. I have none other than Mr. Rob Schultz. Rob, how you doing, brother? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Excited to be on with uh, with a bunch of former or a bunch of veterans and active guys. It's great to be here. Awesome, man. I appreciate you for taking the time to share your story. Uh, you know, before we get into what you're doing now in your second service, can you just share with your audience a little bit about your service? Uh, and I mentioned you're a Navy veteran. Can you just a little, tell us a little bit about um, when you served and how long you served for? Yes, of course. Um, well, way back before 9-11, so I, uh, I was, I was uh, ROTC, Navy ROTC at the University of Texas. Okay. And so I received my commission in uh, May of 90 and uh, served aboard the USS John Rogers, uh, which was a destroyer on the East Coast. Uh, and that was from 90 to 94. So, um, so yeah, that was, that was my service way back a long time ago. <laughs> awesome. And, um, you know, I was reading your bio a little bit. You were actually, uh, you, you already had your degree, right? Was it accounting? At that time, or? yeah. So you know, most most naval officers have have engineering degrees and so forth. But yeah. I had an accounting degree, which was kind of different. Uh, but um, mainly because it was just something I liked and I was good at. I think you know, at the University of Texas, it's a really good degree to have. It's what my dad had, you know. Right. And um, so yeah, when I went in, I I actually had an accounting degree, uh, and then um, served as a communications officer served in engineering and stuff like that. And that's probably why I ended up where I did eventually is because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a numbers guy. So did, um, did your dad have an influence on you in going that route before you joined the, um, the Navy? Did you, um, I think so. That? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Um, there's a story I tell in the, in the book, I think it's the second chapter about, you know, my dad, and we used to have talks about, you know, about investing and things like that. So I would say my dad did influence, um, you know, my degree choice and, um, and, and also was very encouraging of, you know, my desire to, to serve as well. Okay. Um, so, so Rob, you know, a lot of our, our listeners are either like, uh, in the, na in the military or are transitioning out of the military. Right. Okay. Um, so can you just share with us a little bit about how was your transition and how were you able to, um, you know, overcome any challenges that you might've faced uh, when you were transitioning? Sure. Um, that could be a really long story because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you get that a lot. I don't know. Um, but did, I, did I would it, say, I would say that my transition, what's that? Did it take you a while to, um, you know, find what you're, your next purpose, your next mission in, in, in life? It, it didn't take me that long, but okay. it was hard. Let's put okay. it that way. Uh, you know, it took a couple of different steps. Um, let's start. I mean, so I decided that we were, we, my, my wife and I, and I had a two year old daughter at the time. So we decided that, you know, we were going to transition out. Um, and, you know, I love the job, but um, it, it it wasn't really, the op tempo was insane and it was right. really tough on my family. And, you know, I decided that that's what we needed to do. And the, uh, I, I did some interviewing, you know, like, uh, I'm sure they still do it now. A lot of the really big companies, uh, like I remember mobile oil, Walmart, you know, you know, for their, uh, uh, large warehouses, things like that. There were a lot of companies that really, really wanted to, to hire prior military in different roles. And so I went through a recruiting process, which was very interesting and, you know, had a lot of really good leads to work with some very, very large companies, but I ended up not going that route primarily because it just kind of looked like it was going to be the, the same deal. You know, they were going to move me around every two to three years, uh, really wasn't going to have a lot of control over, you know, where I was or what I was doing. 
And that's why I was getting out. I was getting out because I wanted to, I wanted to settle down and, you know, yeah. and raise a family somewhere. Yeah. That was my desire. So I didn't go that route. And then I ended up taking what seemed like at the time an easy route. My, my wife's dad, my father-in-law had a company here in the Metro, in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. And it seemed like a really cool company. It had, you know, there was a, he was a home builder. He had an insurance company, a mortgage company and all this. He's like, man, you can just come work here, kind of work your way up. I was like, wow, that, that sounds great. So when we moved here, I went to work for my father-in-law okay. and everything was fine, except for he had failed to tell me one important thing. And that was that he was going out of business. His, wow. his business was going away. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And I, I don't think he intentionally meant to deceive me. He was probably kind of deceiving himself a little bit too. But I found myself with a second kid on the way. I just bit off a huge mortgage, really more than I should have, because you know I felt like I had the security of the family business and I needed to find another job. <laughs> so I wouldn't call that smooth, would you? Right. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely... Uh not a smooth transition. Right? Yeah. So yeah. So six months in from, from that, I was, I was looking for something else. And, and that's when I finally did what I would recommend to anybody to do is just kind of do a soul searching of, you know, what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. I was, I was kind of, I was probably reacting a little bit too much to what I thought was available instead of really trying to decide on my own you know, what it is that I felt like I was good at, what I thought I would enjoy that I wanted to do. So I did that halfway, still, still didn't get it completely right. <laughs> but I did that kind of halfway. I was like, man, you know, when I was in the Navy, I really enjoyed, um, you know, working with the sailors on a lot of their financial stuff. Um, they, they needed a lot of, a lot of care there. And I, I ended up doing a lot of that, you know, counseling them on different things. Uh, and I was like, well, that's what I want to be. I want to be a financial planner, but I didn't know what one was and I didn't know how to become one. Um, so I kind of asked around and, you know, one guy here in town said, well, you need to go talk to this other guy. And I went and talked to him uh, and I went to work for uh, a large insurance company uh, on full commission. And that turned out fine but it wasn't what I wanted to be. I didn't want to be like a full commission salesperson, but I was for, um, for about, uh, about three years and nearly starved to death the first year. Cause I had that confidence and that cockiness that you get from being in the military. And I was like, Oh, I can, I can do this. I don't need a draw or any of those other things and I'll be fine. And I nearly starved. Uh, but then the second year I, I had huge success at it, uh, because I was pretty good at it. And, and then by the third year, I was definitely looking not to be working for a large company like that. Cause what I really wanted to do was the true financial planning for clients. So okay. I transitioned out of that to, to more of an independent role, which took a while and is hard. And, um, you know, just kind of built up my own company over, over the years. Um, so, so you, that's how I did it. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't, some of that I wouldn't advise, but it all turned out fine. So, yeah. So you mentioned you, um, you know, you worked for a company, um, for, for, for commission, um, even though you kind of hesitated, you didn't want to do it at first. Right. Um, I don't think I knew any better. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I, I really didn't hesitate. I just didn't, I didn't really, uh, know any better. Um, and it was fine. And you know, it was good that I developed those skills, those sales, sales skills. You need those right. out here in the, out here in the quote, real world, you need some sales skills. I yeah, probably, no it. matter uh, what you're doing, especially if you're going to be entrepreneurial or, uh, you know, try to develop your own business. Yeah. You need that experience, right. With, with, with sales mm -hmm. and, and, and why not gain that experience from a company that, that can provide you some of those uh, experience and those skill sets, which yeah, you advise, would you advise somebody, um, you know, that might be going to, down the similar route as you to, um, you know, maybe work for a company before going out 
on their own? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, especially in my industry, in my career, which is, you know, does you ha do have to develop some skills over the, over time. I'm a certified financial planner. You know, you want to get those certifications and, um, but you don't have to do it the same way I did. The, my, my industry's developed over the years and now there are a lot of really good registered investment advisory firms that are fee-only fiduciary, exactly what I wanted to do that exist and, uh, and have really good training programs. And that would be great. Uh, but unfortunately, I think a lot of the guys that want to do what I do, you know, end up with the large insurance companies and financial services companies working on commission. And then it's, it's very, very hard to get out of that, get out of that role. Um, okay. You get kind of sucked into it a little bit because of the way you're, you're paid. Uh, and it gets harder and harder to start over on your own. It was, it was good that I was able to transition out as quick as I did. I was, uh, I was playing golf yesterday with a guy who um, ended up, you know, 15 years kind of stuck. Oh, wow. But for three years ago, he was able to kind of get out of a, a one of those large, you know, full commission type uh, firms. Um, yeah, you don't want if, if that's not what you want to do that you don't want to spend 15 years doing it, do you? Right, right. That most definitely. And you, I mean, you you did it for about you said three years. Yeah. And then you went out on your own. You started your own business um, coming, you know, with the Schultz uh, uh, with your business Schultz Wealth, right? Yeah, it, it took, you know, it, it was a series of transitions. I have my, my godfather, you know, my mentor, he, he, he said that to me once. He's like, you know what? You're always in transition. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I really do believe that. I think, I think you're, I mean, if you're growing and succeeding, uh, you're always in transition. You know, you're, you're kind of reinventing yourself a lot of the time. And that certainly happened in my career. I just didn't go boom three years with the, the large insurance company. And then all of a sudden Schultz wealth. No, there was, right. there were some many steps and there were some people, some mentors that came in and really helped me out. Uh, when, when I got ready to kind of get out of that agency is what they call it. Um, I got introduced to um, some really, really great, older guys that were very, very established. One was the president of a local bank who then introduced me to um, a gentleman who, who owned like a really, these were guys that owned like and operated very large um, banks and in an insurance company. And that kind of got me out of it because I went into kind of a, um, a joint venture with them. And that got me out of that office into another office, which I was able to then kind of get out on my own. It gave me the, 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 the powder to be able to do it. And then to go into a partnership with some other folks from about 2000 to 2014. And then finally Schultz wealth on my own, uh, seven years ago. Okay. Okay. I, I, it's, it's funny. You mentioned, you know, you mentioned you're always in transition, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've kind of discussed that in previous guests. Um, your transition doesn't stop when you leave the military. It's always like it's whenever you have these career shifts, these career moves, it's it's never ending. Transition is never ending. And it kind of reminds me of the graph of, I don't know if you've seen that with uh, ent um, entrepreneurship, right? It's always, it's it's not, it's never linear, right? It's always- Oh, oh I up, love that. Down, up, down, and sideways, and you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I had a professor at the University of Texas who told me that the first time he said, and I've written similar things over and over again, life is not a straight line, right? you know, and the earlier you realize that, but that's the way we want to think we, we, cause that's logical, right? That it's a straight line, but that's not, that's not life. You're either going up or you're going down. <laughs> that's for yeah, sure. That's <laughs> um, so Rob, you know, going, um, you know, starting your own business, um, becoming a financial advisor. Um, can you share with us some of the, I want to say like worst moments, but some of the obstacles, some of the um, difficulties that you had to overcome and how did you overcome those, those, uh, those moments? 
Yeah, sure. Um, I can't think of any like, like huge, huge obstacles. I think that the, the main thing in my career that becomes a kind of a over and over, you just have, you, you have to learn how to maintain a very, very good activity level. Um, and I think that's something that you probably learn in the military that you can take and transition to, you know, what I would consider a fairly high paced job, which is my, that's what mine is because, you know, you cannot afford to have a week that you're just kind of hanging out in the office or not really doing much that mm. you, you, that, that straight line will go straight down <laughs> in that case. Um, so I would say the, uh, some of the obstacles are it's just always trying to make sure that you have activity, that you have people that you're talking to and that, um, you know, as long as I, as long as I've always done that, there haven't really been any issues. I would say that if I ever get to the point where, you know, that activity is not where it should be, that's where sometimes I had, I had issues. Uh, and then of course, you know, taking care of your clients and, you know, doing it for the right reasons, making sure that, uh, that what you're doing is in, in their best interests, uh, is, is important. That's always made it easy for me because that's the way I've, I've always thought of it. Um, and people say that they're like, Oh, I, I can't do what you do. It's just too much pressure from the standpoint of managing other people's money. And they bring up two thousand. you know, I've been through several downturns. Um, but those, those weren't hard because I mean, that's, that's when you really do get paid to do what you do. That's, right. that's when I'm supposed to like gut up and communicate and, and, and do what I'm supposed to do. Um, and again, probably another great lesson from the military, you know, uh, you know, failure is not an option, right? Oh, <laughs> so, always find a way. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a way there's, right. you know, in, in any situation in the military, you're absolutely taught that that, you know, and, and so, you know, those obstacles become, uh, you know, there, I think there's something that when you don't have the training, these guys have can be pretty difficult, but for, for what, what, what we've all been through, it's not hard. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so Rob, you know, talking about, uh, financial counseling and ad advising, right. Um, for our young uh, service members out there who you know are starting out their career in the military, what are what are some of your let's say top three tips in helping them prepare their uh, you know their finances for for anything that might happen, right? For any anything unexpected, what are some some top three things that you'd uh, you'd uh, advise them on doing with with regards to financing? Yeah, we'll um, we'll do three. But there's really just one. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you a couple more. But the one absolute thing that defines whether you're able to get through, you know, uh, any kind of emergency or transition or whatever it may be, is to have money, to have cash. Okay. And just the way our human nature is, it's something that's really hard to do. Okay. But you have to have cash. You ought to be, you ought to have a very, very healthy savings account. If you're thinking that you have a transition coming up, you need to be stockpiling money, putting it aside because you're going to need it. Um, and then if you're able to do that, that's what, that's what gives you what you need to be able to, you know, kind of set up the job of your dreams, right? Mm. Um, if you don't have enough cash, you've got to take the first thing that comes, comes along. Whereas if you have cash, you can, you can uh, kind of hold out maybe and and make it, you know, through something. So that's the number one thing. And then along those lines is, you know, keeping your spending in line and obviously, you know, maintaining a low a low debt load. I'm not a no debt guy. I think there's good debt in my book. I go over what there's good debt, there's bad debt, and so forth. But um, you know, what a lot of people do is they'll put all their money towards their debt and then they have no cash. And then the next thing that comes up, they need tires for their truck. And what do you have to do? You got to put it on a credit card. It's cash. It's all about having cash savings before 
really you can have anything else. And again, I keep referencing it because it has all this stuff in it, but I go over that in great detail in my book and I tell some fun stories, some of them from the Navy, some of them from when I was just, just starting out at the insurance agency that are kind of fun. Good uh, sea stories that you can uh, yeah. share with them. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Awesome. So you mentioned, um, you know, good debt and versus bad debt. Can you explain to our audience um, who might not know what that mean? Uh, explain to us what good debt is and uh, what, what bad debt is. Yeah. So um, good debt is called, is also called leverage. And the very best debt is the debt that allows you to do something or invest in something that can make more than what you're, what you're paying in interest. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So, you know, that's what companies do. That's what entrepreneurs do. Uh, that's, you know, any, anybody who accelerates their wealth does it through leverage and uh, that's, that's good debt, you know, and, and as a consumer, the best example of that is, you know, a house. You buy a house, it should be able to appreciate at or a little bit higher than what your interest rate is. And that's, that's good debt. Bad debt is if it has a high interest rate on it and, and, it, and you ended up with no asset. Right. That's, that's the worst debt there is. Um, and that's, best example of that is credit card debt that you just use, you know, for your monthly spending. I call that your burn. The, the, the money that you spend every month just burns away, right? There's really nothing to show for it except for you're still alive, right? So um, if you're using debt for the burn at a high rate, that's bad debt. Don't do that. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. So, I mean, it's, Guys and guys and gals, instead of you know, and spending that money, deployment money on a new car, that new uh, uh, video game console, uh, invest in something that can make money for you in return. And like Rob just mentioned, um, I wish I would have done this when I was younger in my career. Uh, something as like buying a house, right? And yeah, obviously you don't want to rely on appreciate appreciation itself, but I mean that's one of the many benefits. Of the, of uh of purchasing a a, a home yes and, and then just, cash first yeah yeah you know exactly. don't don't buy all that stuff unless you have a nice healthy savings already and keep a good buffer at all times don't don't spend that cash down on on expendables yeah that's a great point and one of the things I, i'm glad i started doing when i was younger is basically make sure that you know you always pay yourself first right um, yeah make sure you save a good amount um, without, you know, so a good amount of money that you don't even have to see, not even have to touch into, you know, a savings account or, or something that you, uh, you can't reach that way. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's not seeing it, but it's also saving you, you're saving money from it. So great point. Yeah. And along those lines, when you go through transition, what changes, you know, not right, only right. did your, does your pay change, but your expenses are going to change too. And for a lot of soldiers and sailors and so forth, it's going to change a lot. And when, and that's a threat. So you have to, you know, make sure that you maintain control over your spend, you know, during and after that transition and you let that settle out because it'll just, it'll be different. You need to just recognize that. Great point. Great point. So Rob, I have another question. So, you know, we have listeners that might have kids. Um, I have two kids myself. Uh, what are, what are some of your advice as far as like do's and don'ts in, you know, educating your children with, uh, you know, gaining that financial, financial knowledge? Yeah. Um, I have four kids and every one of them is different. Every one of them treats money different differently. Mm -hmm. My client that was in here a while ago was laughing. They have three kids, every single one of them. The, you know, one of them loves to invest money. She said one of them uh, just loves, loves, loves to spend it. And the other one <laughs> is extremely frugal and just wants to have cash. And that that's so typical. Every, every right. kid's going to be different, probably the way, which is so weird because they grow up in the same house. But anyway, <laughs> you know, that that's what you're going to see is I, I think that you do have to treat them differently. Don't try to treat them all the same and approach the education of, of money maybe differently based upon their strengths and their weaknesses. 
And, and the best way to do that is to, I like to say, let them screw it up. <laughs> let them screw Cause it, yeah. yeah, let them screw it up, you know, cause like how old are your kids? Well, uh, they're young. They're, I got, a, she's turning three next month and I just got a newborn. Uh, awesome. So. so at some point, you know, they're going to start wanting stuff. Right. <laughs> okay. And as that starts to happen, you can, you can put them on, you know, um, you, you can start giving them money to make those decisions. And I like to kind of push that where, where, you know, I don't give them the money with strings attached. I let them go ahead and really screw it up. And the best example is 16 year old has a new car, needs gas, has all this new freedom, put them, you know, you, you give them an allowance, you know, a reasonable allowance and, you give them that money at the first of the month and then they start learning how to make that money last work, yeah. or else they'll be walking to school by the 15th. Right. <laughs> Cause they're going to go out with their friends, yeah. you know, and spend all that money. And the thing is, if you don't bail them out, they won't do it the second month. Okay. And that's where we screw up as parents is we try to put strings on the money. Whereas I prefer that we let them, you know, let them decide. And a lot of times they'll decide better than we would. Okay. And, uh, and then the second thing is, uh, don't, don't bail them out when they, when they screw up a little bit, let them make those mistakes because if you don't let them do it now, they'll do it, they'll do it later and right. you won't be around to, to help them out. Yeah. I think that's a great point you made, Rob. I mean, experience itself is a great learning lesson, right? <laughs> like, um, you know, like you said, um, having making them go through those experiences that way you know they learn from it and they learn not to do not not to do or make those mistakes um in the future right so yeah yeah and they learn it while they're in your house whereas mm. later you won't hear about it right yeah and they'll all of a sudden be in big consumer debt and you know stressed out and it could take them years to, to uncover from that. So it's such a great gift to give them, to give them the opportunity to start learning about it. And when I said that they'll make better decisions than maybe you can, um, I have, I have one of my kids is just super caring and loves to give away money. How cool is that? You know? And if we had, you know, put strings on it and so forth and said, no, you have to use this for your, this or that or whatever, you know, she would have, she would have eventually discovered that, but she got to discover that a lot earlier. So that's kind of cool. So Rob, what's been, what would you say has been like the most rewarding experience or experiences you've had um, as a financial advisor? Yeah. The, the most rewarding is I've been doing it for a long time now. And so I've, I've completed the cycle as I would like to say, you know, where, my clients, I have clients that um, I've helped put their kids through college. I've helped them retire. I've helped them sell their business and complete the cycle. And that's, that's amazingly rewarding uh, to know that I've, I've been there. I've provided them with sound advice to where it's, it's worked out for them. Um, that, that in and of itself is the biggest reward you can get for, for what I do. That's awesome, man. Um, so for those of you guys just joining us, talking to Rob Schultz, uh, president of Schultz Wealth. He's also the financial planning and wealth management advisor, uh, author of the book, Thoughts on Things Financial, Your Guide to Chaotic Money World. Rob, t talk to us a little bit about the book. What else can we, um, you know, where can we get it? Where, what else can you expect from, from the book? You mentioned your, the title is this, your guide to a chaotic money world. Can you explain that? I can. Um, it's titled that way because it felt like chaos when I was writing it. Uh, <laughs> and I can remember, well, I can remember when I had kids your age <laughs> and it felt that way. Okay. You know, it's just, I remember just being tired all the time and feeling like, man, which way is up? And right. am I, Am I making progress? So that's why I use the term chaos. And, and you know, if you're doing it right, that's what it feels like, <laughs> believe it or not. And so the, the book kind of tries to tell you in chapters, just some of the important things, basic stuff that you should know, you know, 
to, to have a financially, personally financially re rewarding life. And, you know, all the way across the board. So you should be able to read it and go, okay, I have a base knowledge now hmm. and I can do this. Um, that's, that's why it's called that. That's what it's designed for. I think it's a really, really good book um, for, you know, a younger family, somebody who's, who's transitioning out of the military. That, that's really who I wrote it for. It's not as much for somebody like my age who's more established. A lot of my clients who've read it, they, they already know all this stuff because, <laughs> you know, basically all I did was write all the questions that I've answered, you know, for 26 years, right? So, yeah. so they, they know all of it. Um, but, uh, but that's what it is just to give you some basics and tell you some fun stories and do it in a way that's not intimidating. I, I don't use, you know, fancy language or anything. I try to try to describe it in a way that, that you can just kind of get it and understand it. Even if you don't have an accounting degree and you're not a numbers geek. It's awesome. So it's great for, um, you know, for those just beginning, um, in their, in their, beginning in their financial planning and, and um, you know, getting ready to, uh, whether they're single or they have a family um, to prepare themselves to be, uh, to be financially uh, more independent or more knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. You can get it anywhere. It's um, just search for it on Amazon, for instance. Okay. Um, and you can, you can contact me you know, through Schultz Wealth or SchultzWealth.com. Uh, I have a Facebook group called Thoughts on Things Financial. You can join that. You, we can talk about this stuff. Um, I try to be accessible. And, uh, and yeah, if this is something where you want to get a base knowledge. It's a, it's a good place to start. Awesome. Awesome. So, Rob, before we go into our second segment of the podcast, uh, I got one question, one final question. Uh, what's one thing you want our our listeners, our viewers to take away from this episode? One thing to take away from this episode. Well, probably what we just talked about that, you know, it's going to, when you're, when you're trying to make progress, sometimes it's going to feel like chaos, but all, all these folks were trained for that. So it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. You, as a veteran or somebody that's transitioning out of the military, right? You've, I'm sure you've experienced uh, some some not so great things in in the military. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'll help you face uh, whatever you uh, you have to face out there in the civilian world. So, um, yeah, that's a great point. Um, all right, Rob. So, going to our second segment here, this is what I call the Fast Five. So, it's the same five questions I ask all my guests. Okay. Um, Rob, so first question, what's one hobby you enjoy? I have lots of hobbies. Um, I, I just, I like to do all kinds of stuff, but um, the weirdest one and the one that I probably enjoy the most is I, as I carve duck decoys, I carve wooden duck decoys. Carve wooden duck decoys. Yep. Do you sell them or? I've been thinking about it. I, I haven't, I give them away. I give oh, them away okay. to people and, and I actually hunt over them. I, lo I love to duck hunt. That's another hobby I have. That's why I kind of do it. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I actually hunt over hand carved decoys that I've made, which is really weird, but I, I like it. That's awesome. Awesome. All right. So uh, second question, Rob, if you had to choose one person to hang out with for one day, who would it be and why? Well, I would love to hang out with Warren Buffett because, you know, well, he's hugely famous, hugely successful. He's in my industry. Just the stuff that he just, when he just talks, just, it just makes so much sense. And he's so down to earth. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of um, really famous people that I would be really intimidated and kind of scared to be around, to be quite honest, because, you know, they're just not very approachable, but he seems really approachable. So I think it'd be really fun to hang out with Warren. Yeah, just to pick his brain, like maybe just oh, for, gosh. for yeah. a day, right? <laughs> like all the, all the, you know, the wealth that he's built. So uh, next question, Rob, recommend a book for our audience to read. Yeah, and the my favorite book right now, I'm reading it actually with my daughter because it's just so good. It's, um, it's called The Go-Giver. 
by Bob Berg. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, I, I, I meant to grab it. I have it here. I do have do that you? book. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool book. It's a great it's, book. It's a really short read. It's a fun story. Right. And there's just a lot of um, really base. There's some really good stuff in there for somebody who's, you know, about to launch into a civilian career to, to just kind of know right. um, how to go about things in a way that, you know, they'll be very successful, not, not only for you, but for those around you. It's a great book. Yeah, it's a quick read. Um, yeah. I think I read it a couple of times already. So, yeah, it's a great book. Uh, next question, Rob. What's your favorite quote and why? Um, I had a hard time. Let's see. Well, I'll just, I'll have to go with the, just a simple dad one that everybody uses, but I, I, I use it all the time. You know, life's not fair. I like, I like that quote. I use it. My dad, my, my kids hate it, but it's true. Yeah. You know, life, life is not fair. Don't expect it to be. And, um, and that's okay for it not to be fair. Uh, you just, you just have to find your way. I like it. I like it. Simple. And I mean, facts right there. <laughs> yeah. You, you'll be saying that as these kids get older, you'll, you'll yeah. be, you'll find yourself saying that just like, just like <laughs> your dad, you watch. All right, Rob. So last question here. Uh, where do you see yourself in a year, five years, or even 10 years from now? Yeah. So I'm 54 and, um, I just recently went through a big soul searching kind of, uh, because I mean, I could be done, you know, I could, I could retire if whatever that is. Right. Um, but, um, I think over the next 10 years, I have a 10 year plan, uh, to really grow the business at, at a really good clip. I have a transition plan in place. I would, I have a, associate kind of junior advisor here that, uh, that is a key person who I'll, I'll probably transition most, if not all the business to over that period of time. So I'm hoping to spend more time doing this kind of stuff and speaking and talking and less time probably, you know, with clients, which is kind of depressing in a way, cause it's what I love. I love that, but, um, I'm kind of excited about not doing as much of that and a little bit more of this kind of stuff over the next, over the next several years. Awesome, man. And, uh, look forward to hearing more about, um, you and in your business and, and best of luck in your, like you said, you're always transitioning, right? Always in your, in your transition of, of a business and, um, you know, getting to travel and, and, and doing things like this more. Uh, so yeah. all the best to you, Rob. Uh, one final thing before we go, man, uh, how can our audience, um, stay in touch with you? How can they support you? Where can they follow you at? Yeah. Um, the website is just Schultz wealth spelled weird S C H U L Z no T Schultz Uh, you can contact me there. Like I said, Facebook is, is a good spot, uh, through the thoughts on things, financial group. Uh, those are two places that where I'm very accessible. If anybody wants to, wants to talk. Okay. So um, there you go. Make sure you guys reach out to him, uh, schultzwealth.com. And also join the Facebook group. Uh, you said thoughts on things financial. Yep. Uh, make sure you guys go check that out. Join the group and, uh, and support Rob. And also grab a copy of his book, a copy of his book, Thoughts on Things Financial your guide to a chaotic money world. And you can also, you can grab that on Amazon. Um, Rob, thank you again for, uh, for taking the time and, and sharing your knowledge here on, on all things uh, financial and uh, best of luck to you, man. Yeah. Thank you. And, and as well, and best of luck to everybody out there as they, as they live their life. Super exciting. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it.